Hello everyone. I am going to take a few minutes and explain to you a very complicated system and process that we found, we've been dealing with in the jail, and ultimately we've made a series of criminal arrests. So I want to start out by telling you that in 2016, it was late in the year in 2016, we had 13 people in the county jail over a couple of day period get violently ill to the point that we had to take them to the hospital. One of them was in critical condition. We thought he was gonna pass away, but the physicians were able to save his life. And there was no apparent reason that we could see for all of these people being sick at the same time. So being trained detectives, we knew that through some of their nefarious conduct, they had gotten into something they shouldn't have been involved in. Some of them who were in the hospital, and we, as we talked to them and the medical staff talked to them, we convinced them that they may be on the verge of death. Maybe it would be a good idea for you to tell us what you did because we need one to save your life and we need two to find out to make sure that this doesn't spread. What we determined is through our mail system, narcotics was being smuggled in, but not in the conventional way that you would think. They were spraying chemicals on paper. And once they layered the chemical on the paper, they would dry it, then they would iron it so that it wouldn't be wrinkled, and they would send it in through the normal mail. At that time, our detention staff immediately began to look for an alternative to paper being inside the jail. You must understand that we receive at the county jail thousands of pieces of paper a week, multiples of thousands of pieces of paper a week. You also understand there is no quick test to scan a piece of paper and determine if it has a chemical compound on it. So the only way that we can deal with this is by stopping the paper from going into the jail. And that's what we did. We now have a system called the Smart Jail Mail. It is a paperless system. Well, this sent all of our narcotics dealers in the jail running for a different system and a process. And in that process, what we found was that they took advantage of attorneys such as Sarah Jones. She is a well-respected defense attorney. And we found that they were giving pieces of paper to Sarah to put in the legal files so the next time Sarah went to talk to her client at the jail and, and discuss the legal files and they would look through the paper, then they would know from the inside of the jail which pieces of paper to rip out of Sarah's file or to take from the file. And that was the paper that had the drugs infused on it. Sarah, I might point out, has worked with us completely. Ethically, she's had to get off of some cases, as you might well expect it, where they took advantage of her. But what we found that attorneys, as they regularly visit their clients, provide them with legal mail. And we know that. But attorneys have standards. Our experience with our attorneys and criminal defense attorneys, overwhelmingly they're ethical, but sometimes they're naive. 
or sometimes they're doing a favor like you know it's 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 my uh it's my son's birthday and his son his son has drawn this birthday when when you're there doing your legal thing with him can you give him this hand drawn piece of paper from junior who gave him a birthday card that he did at school well, it's not a birthday card he did at school at all they dummied it up and sprayed it with chemical interestingly enough they spray it with a variety of things and some of the things that is most popular and they really like this better than the K2 is Raid and Roach Motel did you hear me they're spraying this stuff on paper and then either smoking it or eating it in the county jail let me say that again, okay, because n normal people can't understand this. For example, the Roach Motel. This is such a wonderful thing. They'll put the Roach Motel in a plastic bag with paper, seal it up, shake it up, get the chemicals to acting, put it out in the heat so the chemicals react, and shake it. And when the chemicals, who would, th who would think to do this? When the chemicals were infused on the paper, then they eat it or smoke it. Are you kidding me? Or, I, I mean, you know, why don't you, you, you know, like try, you know, cottage cheese or something on your paper? Or they spray Raid, $4 a can on the paper. We've received information from sources in the jail that said K2's cool, synthetic amphetamines cool, but what we really like is the raid. It'll kill you. It kills the roaches and criminals not too far away. So now we, and there's no uh, apparent test for this, but what we do know is there's a Nerva agent in this stuff. And that's what they're using. So, the cases we made today didn't have the raid and the roach spray. This is just a new world that we, we're discovering. So the cases I'm going to talk to you about today understand that these are chemical compounds that came back as some form of K2 or synthetic amphetamine. So how did it get here? China. There's a return label or a mailing label where our sources have been receiving the K2 from China. When it gets here, sometimes it comes in a liquid form, sometimes it comes in a powder form, and if you will, they rehydrate it into a liquid form, and then they spray it on several things. But if it's going in the gel, obviously, if it's going in the gel, it's got to go on paper. So Randall Kirby, who was arrested, he's out on bond for trafficking in K2. He says, huh, I got an opportunity here to make some money. So he's out on bond. His girlfriend, they're the ringleaders. The mailing label from China was to the girlfriend. When they get the chemical, they're the ones that have actually processed the paper and then they smuggle it into the jail through mail and now through legal mail. So what does this bring? When they process a piece of paper, they sell it for $75, one sheet of paper. When the sheet of paper goes into the jail, 
it is sold in the jail for $1,500, as much as $1,500. And in the jail, of course, they divide it up into little squares, whether they eat it or what they like to do is they will tear off a little piece of metal from some of the lighting devices, put the paper on it, and arc it against the electrical current till they set the paper on fire, then they smoke it. You know, they're criminals, they're, but they're in, they figure out a way to get where they need to be. Now, of course, for those who are involved in the raid deal, they pay $4 for this. We estimate you can treat between 20 and 30 sheets of paper. So you can, for a $4 investment and a few sheets of paper, make $75 a page times 20 or 30, $4 investment that is $1,500 in the jail. That's not all. So if you're not shocked enough, I want to introduce you to Mother of the Year, Brenda Bittner. She helped smuggle the legal mail into the jail for her son, Zachary, who in turn sold it in the jail. He had three envelopes with the Matthews Law Firm written on them. Let me tell you and underscore, the Matthews Law Firm had nothing to do with this. It was not a Matthews Law Firm letterhead. You know how we knew that? They spell Matthews wrong. So they dummied up Matthews Law, uh, law Firm letterhead put the K-2 in it, sent it through the regular mail. It was treated as jail mail. And ultimately, it got to Zachary, who took Brenda's $75 investment and made it into a $1,500 investment. Mother did this for the son. Well, I've got to tell you, you don't think for a second Cheryl, Cheryl Crow was going to let Brenda be the only mother of the year. There's Cheryl Coe. Cheryl Cole would work with her son, Jamie Garst the second. She moved money and arranged for money and drugs to be sent. She used a banter law firm set of envelopes put eight pages in there, and sent it in as legal mail. And Johnny Coleman, he's mixed in with the group. Johnny Coleman is just another one of the sellers in jail. And of course, once again, there's Here's how it's getting in. Here's what we're doing. Our attorney is having her jail privileges suspended for six months. She cannot come into the county jail. We will make arrangements for her to meet her clients on a confidential downloaded website so she can have communications if she has clients inside the jail. Here's a message to the other attorneys. The criminals inside are trying to take advantage of you. If you bring legal mail to the jail or you send legal mail to the jail, we're being forced through a system to guarantee confidentiality between you and your client where that mail will be copied, scanned, sealed in envelopes, and directed to your client. The originals will either be returned to you or put in the client's mail for them to have whenever they leave, unless, of course, we suspect 
smuggled mail, then it will be forwarded to the FDLE labs. We absolutely, unequivocally will guarantee confidentiality for all lawyers and their clients, our inmates at the county jail, but we're not going to allow lawyers to be taken advantage of. We're not going to allow them to send mail in personally when they go to make visitations any longer. We can't. Over that period of time, we were sweating bullets. We were absolutely frightened that we were going to have up to 13 people die. Some of them got a little sick. Some of them got a lot sick. One of them we were absolutely sure was going to die, and fortunately, we got people to admit to us. It all comes back to K2, synthetic amphetamines, roach spray, sprayed on paper, being smuggled into the jail. Now, so our goal is, and, and this is our faith-based dorms as well, everything's going to have to go to our inmates electronically and or it's going to have to be copied by our folks through the appropriate security mechanisms to make sure that confidential mail remains confidential and given to the folks. We can't allow them to have any paper from the outside. And once all of that happens, then we'll be chasing the next way that they figure out how to try to smuggle drugs into the jail. They won't stop trying to figure it out. We won't stop putting them in jail. Let me look over my notes here and see if I've covered everything. I think I have. Any questions? Have you seen uh, this being done <clears throat> anywhere else? Thank you very much. I should have mentioned that when we, f when we first got the terminology La Cucaracha, it came to us through a Corrections One article that we read in July of 2018. And it clearly talked about the exact issue that we're having here in our county jail, at jails across the nation, and prisons across the nation, and it actually spoke of people dying in the different jail and corrections facilities across the nation from this kind of silliness. And of course, at the, at the, you know what happens when there's a death in the jail, it's, oh my gosh, somebody died in the jail. Well, I gotta tell you, you got to understand clearly, you know, when people start spraying raid on paper in the jail, People can die. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to protect these criminals from themselves. So it's not just a Polk County Sheriff's problem. It's not just in the state of Florida. It's across the nation. And we all have that article available for you all to read should you want to see that. You said none of the cases today <coughs> involve the raid. Is that because that's a legal substance? Or? Well, it's because that this group of people were using K2, but our sources throughout the jail have told us that now, and this is anecdotally based upon what they tell us, they prefer this to the K2, but hey, when you're in jail, you got to take what you can get. So you never found any cases that were raided? We haven't found anything that tested positive for a raid, but understand that we cut off the majority of it in the last uh, 20 months by moving. I mean, we've had to move to an entire different system. We've had to put in place a technologically based system so that we could give them access to the paper and the letters that their loved ones sent in because legally, by law, we have to give them access and communications. And by the way, with the new systems, we're actually giving them more access and more communication ability than they had before. So one of the standards that I set, I said, look, somebody's going to push back when we take paper out of the jail. So make sure that we give them more access to communication, 
not less. Make sure we give them more rapid ability to communicate, not a slower ability. So the reality is the inmates have benefited administratively from this because they have a more rapid ability to communicate with their loved ones or friends on the outside. And at the same time, we're keeping the paper out of the jail and protecting them from killing themselves or making themselves sick. And ultimately, you know what that ends up. You all line up and go, what in the world happened that that person died in jail? Well, it, what happened is raid or K2 or we're still out testing or they've been smoking this raid and K2 and all kinds of drugs and they're very sick people and we have data. We've got data that's coming in over the last few years how they're, we're dealing with a much sicker population in the jail today, and it's from drugs, overwhelmingly, or residual effects from drugs. Do you have uh, an estimate on how much it costs for, the, for you guys to, to make these changes to stop rape? From yes. It didn't cost the taxpayers any money because we co-opted with private enterprise and so there's a win-win on this. They already have access to what we call canteen. So people put money in their accounts for canteen. And the same people that kind of manage our canteen infrastructure also manage this. So it didn't cost the taxpayers. The overwhelming majority of this was paid by, almost 100% of it was paid by our, our co-opting with private enterprise. Have you got any complaints from old legal lawyers saying... I imagine I will after today. <laughs> but uh, I can assure you that, look, we put bad guys in jail. We, we operate ethically and honestly. If we wanted to read somebody's legal mail, we can already do that. Because it, heretofore it comes in in paper. We, we bring it in. We, we historically search it and send it to them, or we bring it into them in a sealed envelope and they open it in our presence so we can search it. We can go in, as, as we call, and uh, flip sales and, and, and search for illegal contraband. If we wanted to do something that ethically and legally was inappropriate, it, it's possible. We will guarantee the highest confidentiality between an inmate and his client. It's guaranteed. If anyone breaches that, first off, they'll be fired on the spot. And then whatever legal opportunities we could take to prosecute them, we do that. We're serious about people having the appropriate legal representation and that being confidential. But it's a new day, and it's a new world, and we all got to learn to live in it. This paper is what we now call an antique, okay? This is not the world anymore. This is not the world anymore, and we all have to learn to live in it. We know you've That's to you, lawyers. You've, you've seen a lot, I'm sure, but did you, have you ever seen, or think you'd see people bringing in raid or gross motel or well, I, you know, I can't tell you I'm surprised because if you look at the, at the compounds in methamphetamine, the acetone, how, how absolutely, totally devastating that chemical compound is to your system, I'm not surprised. When you see that they'll, they'll do heroin, fentanyl, which is a chemical compound that, that's killing people hand over fist, I'm not surprised. There's an element out there of drug users that want to get that more intense high, that bigger shock, that bigger feeling, and they risk their life every time they use drugs. So I'm not surprised. You know, if they figured out that, you know, drying out baby formula and smoking it would give them a high, they'd be doing that. I mean, it's whatever, whatever will give them a buzz, and they don't think they're going to die or don't care whether they're going to die. Well, listen, you may be a criminal, you may be a drug user, 
but we care and we're going to do our best to keep you from killing yourself, whether you like it or not. Do you know we haven't because any time that happens, you know, it goes to medical. Medical sees something suspicious. They go to security. Security obviously goes to law enforcement. So we, we run a jail of, I think there's a little over 2,600. We've had as many as 2,750 this month or this last month. We run a small city every day in the county jail. I mean, I've got more people in the county jail than some of our some of our towns do across this state and nation. So it's not unusual for people to get sick because people get sick. It's not unusual for people to misbehave because people misbehave in their own, in their own towns. But I can tell you that we watch inmates, and we get them medical help quicker. And we get to them if they start fighting quicker. They are safer in the county jail than they are out on the streets from each other. So anytime we see anything in our little town, you can call it Judd Town, we make sure we immediately address it, okay? Because we want everybody well in Judd Town. We, we have no evidence that would, suspo uh, that would support uh, criminal conduct on her part. If we did, we'd have locked her up. So, but, and she has been totally cooperative. I need to underscore that. But still, there's got to be a penalty for, because she was, she was bringing in pieces of paper that she shouldn't have. And in some cases, they were taking advantage of her and stealing them out of the files. But it's not uncommon, and we revoke privileges from attorneys when they don't do things appropriately. We will make, once again, she's had to get off of this particular set of cases, but if she has inmates in the county jail, we will make arrangement for her to have communication, but for six months, her privileges at the county jail have been revoked. I underscore, she won't be prohibited from servicing her clients. She just can't walk in and go into a closed room with her client for the next six months. Okay. Any other questions? Now the headlines, let me help you draw your headlines, is not sheriff won't let criminal defense attorneys in the jail. <laughs> the headline is these people were stopped from potentially killing people in the county jail and do not smoke raid. See y'all later.